So, you're thinking about studying medicine one day, or you're just interested in the process that is becoming a doctor. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain the entire process from high school all the way to becoming a specialized doctor in South Africa. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Matteo and I'm a third year medical student based in Cape Town, South Africa. So a lot of people don't understand that becoming a doctor in South Africa isn't as simple as just going to university, getting out and then eventually you're a doctor. It's quite a long process and there's a lot of studying, a lot of hours put into it that people generally don't know when they choose to apply for it. So I'm going to focus a bit more on the school and university side but also explain the entire process that is becoming a South African doctor. So I thought it would be helpful just to explain the ins and outs and the requirements to get in and essentially give you a bit of insight. As some people just choose medicine, you know, based on that they think being a doctor is cool or that they enjoy biology, which isn't a bad reason to choose medicine, but sometimes it helps knowing how difficult it can be and, you know, how long this process can be. So let's start off in school. So in school, there are really two things you need to be thinking about. Those are your MBTs and your actual school results. If you don't know what your MBTs are, I'll explain a bit later in the video. So for your actual school results, the marks that are quite important are your end of grade 11 marks, your June matric exam results, and your final school matric results. Those being NSC, IEB, or the Cambridge A-level, O-level system, depending on what school you went to and what system you follow. So depending on the university that you apply to, different marks can be a bit more important. For instance, for Stellenbosch University, which is the university I'm at, your grade 11 marks are probably the most important marks out of all three of those. The reason being is that you apply for provisional acceptance with the application process, and once you get that provisional acceptance, especially at Stellenbosch, you can be quite sure to get that final acceptance. The reason being you just need to meet the minimum requirements to get in. And the minimum requirements really aren't that hectic. So especially at Stellenbosch, I would say those grade 11 marks are the most important. For other universities, I'm not 100% sure which marks are the most important, but it helps having great grade 11 marks because when you first apply, you definitely do use those grade 11 marks and possibly your June marks from your matric year. However, I think your final marks in matric are probably more important for other universities, I would say. Everyone sort of wants to know when it comes to your marks in school, what marks should I be getting? Should I be getting 80%, 90% average? I guess there isn't really an answer to that. Unfortunately, every year it differs. Just in general, the marks are generally quite high and you do need to work fairly hard in school. Do you need to um, decide to do medicine from a very young age? No, you don't really need to do that. Some people decided very late in their time at school that they wanted to study medicine and they had the marks to do so. So it's definitely not something you need to decide from when you're really young, but it does help having a few years to prepare and know what you're getting yourself into and to know what you're working towards. So I guess the answer to what marks you need to get in, well, as high as you possibly can. Don't obviously stress too much and kick yourself for getting a bad test result or exam result, you know, you obviously want to aim for high 80s, 90s. At the time of editing, I forgot to mention as well that you do need to take certain subjects in school to apply for medicine, those being physical sciences, which is physics and chemistry, pure mathematics, which is obviously you can't take maths literacy, and biology. And with regards to biology, some universities don't require it. I think the University of Cape Town doesn't require you to take biology, but most of the other universities do require that you do take biology in school. Also another factor to consider, especially in the context of South Africa and applying to medical school, your race, your opportunities you had when you were growing up, the privileges you had and your quality of schooling that you got does come into play as well. Okay, when it comes to MBTs, your MBTs are your national benchmark tests. They are set by an independent board. I guess called the MBT board and they set a standardized test and they have various time slots for, throughout the year and it's basically a test to see uh, your maths, your English and your, your thinking skills. What makes it so difficult, I won't go too much into this as this is something I'd like to speak in another video, but there isn't much preparation you can do, there is some that you can do, but they don't give you many resources for this MBT test. So it really does help ha having good maths and language um, skills. Again, when it comes to your test results, what should you be getting? Well, 
just as high as possible. There really is no limit and there is no minimum requirement for your MBT test results, but generally as high as you possibly can for those. A couple of years ago, back when I was applying, which was only two, year, two three years ago, they had a non-academic form. Obviously now at Stellenbosch University, this um, non-academic form doesn't exist in the application process. So it very much has placed a lot of importance on these MBT test results, especially since schools have different ways of teaching and different difficulties of tests. These MBTs are as I said, a standardized test that everybody writes, so you're all under the same conditions and you're all writing the same difficulty. But if you do want to find out a bit more about how you can better your chances of getting in and things like that, I'm thinking of making another video on this as well, so stay tuned for that. So as mentioned previously, you get a provisional acceptance into a university and then you get your final acceptance. Once you get your provisional acceptance, depending on the university, can be quite a positive thing to show that you really just need to meet the minimum requirements. Some universities just use their provisional acceptance just to give you a, um, an idea that you're on track to get in, but it's definitely not final. So once you've got that acceptance, obviously people decline or accept their university applications. So this means that spots open up for others. So if you don't get that final acceptance a couple of weeks before university starts, then it's not all over because there are still some placements to give and that's where in the first week of university when it's generally an orientation week, they can send out um, acceptance letters to people that didn't get accepted in the first place. If you didn't get in and it's been a couple of weeks since university started and you still didn't get that acceptance, then you would need to look into secondary options. So a lot of people study a BSc or other degrees or they just wait a year and then they use their final matric results especially at a university like Stellenbosch, where I said the grade 11 marks are probably your most important. Sometimes it's worth, if you didn't get such good grade 11 marks, then waiting a year and then reapplying, but using your matric results. Okay, so once you're in medicine, the process of finishing your degree is six years. Depending on the university you go to, some one university, I think it's the University of Free State, it's five years, but the rest of them are all six years. Now, six years is quite a long time to be studying, but uh, you definitely learn a lot. You definitely need the full six years. It's a lot of clinical training. It's a lot of theory to learn. And depending on your university, you'll follow a set program and some differ from others. So once you finish your six years of studying, then you move on to internship and community service. Now, I don't know too much about this. I obviously know the process, but being still in university, I don't know all the ins and outs of this, but essentially once you've finished your six years, you then apply, not via the university, it's through the South African government, I think, to get into internship and community service. Your internship is two years. In other words, you are now a doctor, you go by the title doctor, and you, you can practice medicine, you can prescribe medication, but you are essentially a junior doctor where you still are learning a lot. You have supervisors and doctors and consultants and registrars that are obviously more senior to you and teach you a lot, but you work in hospitals. And the application for this is quite random. Again, I don't know too much about the process of choosing which hospital you go to, but essentially you are allowed to pick hospitals in certain areas and you're only allowed, I think, one hospital in an urban area and then the rest have to be in a rural area, something like that. Then after you've done your two years of internship, wherever you are, you then apply for community service. And this is where you're sent to a rural hospital. And this is where you get a lot of experience. You're a bit more trained and you have a lot more experience uh, from your internship year. You're a bit more of a senior doctor. So after this, you're essentially a GP, a general practitioner. So the process of really studying medicine is actually nine years with all the community service and internship years as well. However, when you're in your internship years and your community service years, you're obviously getting paid as a doctor because you're working now. Okay, so now once you're finished all of those years, you then go on to, if you want to, uh, your specialization years. And uh, in South Africa, it takes about three to seven years depending on what you want to specialize in and uh, I guess the field that you want to go into. So again, it's a lot more years, but you're also working, you're learning and you're getting a lot more experience. So yeah, becoming a doctor isn't really just one of those things where you get your degree and then you're off to go work and you're in your job that you want to be in. You always learning, you're always gaining more experience and there's always more to look forward to, I guess, in this field. 
obviously I haven't really touched on what you can do to get in and the things you can do to better your chances and exactly how difficult the process of becoming a doctor is but I hope this just gives a brief explanation of the length of time it, it takes to become a doctor in South Africa and helps you out a bit if you're thinking about studying medicine or going into this field and you don't really know the process that is becoming a doctor. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you getting this far. I'm very much still new to YouTube, so I've still got a lot to learn and I just really enjoy this process. But yeah, obviously being a small channel, I still have a lot more ideas to put out there and hopefully they'll be somewhat interesting and useful to you. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.